Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all well. Today's video is going to be a makeover. We are finally making over our hallway come landing area at the top of our house. If you've been following our renovation journey, then you'll know we've been talking about this for quite a while and been umming and ahhing as to what we do with the space. So if you're new or you need your memory jogging, I will show you an overview of the space that we have. So it's at the top of our house and it is actually quite a big area. I think really you'd call this a landing. We have recently renovated this top floor, so we've got our two bedrooms and bathroom, and then unfortunately the connecting area to all of these rooms has just been a bit of an unfinished dumping ground. And because it's such a good size space, we really wanted to utilize it for storage. So we were thinking about putting some wardrobes in, but we couldn't quite figure out how to do that. And in the end, we came back to Ikea. So we're gonna be doing a wardrobe hack on the Ikea PAX units to make it look way more traditional and hopefully fit the style of our house without looking Ikea. And to do that, we're gonna adapt it and add trim and probably the biggest part of the transformation the paint to make it look really bespoke. Now we're gonna be using Benjamin Moore paint. They are actually sponsoring today's video, which is definitely one of my dream collaborations. And I can't wait to show you which paints we have chosen and the colors that we're going for. I've been dying to try their paints for so long. Now, if you haven't heard of them, they are a well-known paint brand in the US, which are finally coming to the UK but I'm gonna chat more about that later on when we get to the painting phase. But let me show you the items that we are planning for this space. Now, of course, in true Laura and Ollie style, we are winging this, but we have picked out our items and ordered them from Ikea. So we're going for the PAX wardrobes units, which are slightly slimmer. So they're the 35 deep and the 201 high. This means that it won't go straight to our ceilings. This is something that we chose. I know a lot of people like the floor to ceiling look, but I really love a traditional look. I love being able to see cozy and details so that's why we decided to go for that and then for the inside storage we decided to go for two 50 centimeter carcasses and then one 100 just because of the style of what we want to be putting inside and one of the most random items that I want to put inside is um, wrapping paper and that comes in a really long box and I know that I want it to go in one of those cupboards so any advice if you're planning cupboards really try and think what you're going to be putting into them beforehand so that you can arrange what's going in and make the cupboards to fit specifically. And then I've also ordered the four sand doors. So these are just totally plain Ikea doors. They've got absolutely no detail. And I think they come out at the cheaper end of the range, which is great because we are gonna make them bespoke and add trim to them, hopefully later on. But hopefully now you have a bit of an idea as to what we are trying to achieve. Fingers crossed we actually can, because at the moment we have no idea if we will be able to. We've never seen anybody add depth to the IKEA doors, so that could be a bit of a challenge, but let's see how it goes. So the first job was to make the base for the units. What this does is it raises the unit so that you can fit the skirting board around it. We use 18 millimeter plywood with 12 millimeter packers and we spaced those out so that we could give ventilations. We also made them just thick enough so that we felt like it wouldn't mark our wood floors. And to put this together, we simply used wood glue for the long term and also super glue so that it would stick it in place until the wood glue dried. And a little tip for the base too, make it a little bit longer than you need because you can cut it off at the end, but if it's too short, you've got to start again. We then made our first carcass so that we can see how it fitted onto that base and next to the wall. And then we needed to apply the first spacer slash trim piece of wood, which is a 44 millimeter planed pine. Now I'm gonna link it below, it's from Wix. We decided to glue and screw this on again. You could probably just go ahead and glue it, but we like things to be secure. And we also made a packer the depth of the door because you want this trim piece to exactly match the door depth. So it needs to protrude out a little bit from the carcass. Yay! <laughs> oh wow, that looks lovely. I mean, it looks like not a lot right now, but. 
when we did our renovations and electrics, we actually had some points put here so that we could have sockets in our wardrobes. So Ollie's just wiring in all of the electrics so that we can have power inside of them. We also finally put the bulbs into our spotlights. Yes, it took us a year. Our final IKEA carcass just arrived! Yay! Um, so we have the final piece for the wardrobe to be built. By now, we should know what we're doing. Yeah, we so, figured out. So we're hoping today is going to go really smoothly and potentially by the end of today we might see the wardrobe actually coming together? Hopefully. Maybe? We'll see. That's the thought. I'm going to build this carcass Ollie is going to be messing around with we'll put the trim. Wood up. Yeah. Some of the trim. And yeah, let's do this. Get it done. So in order to secure these bits of wood in to separate up the units so they look a little bit more luxury, <laughs> we are gluing and screwing them in, but they've got to be really far forward. So we penciled in a little line down the edge there, and then we screwed a couple of I drilled a couple of holes and countersunk them so that you can't see the screws. And then we made this packer so that when you put that there, it is exactly the right height Depth, sorry for the doors and the panelling and now we've just got to glue this onto there, clamp it on, screw it all together. And that we're having uh, one at each end and one in the middle and one at the top just to trim it out a little bit. Frame it all up. The aim of the game is to make it look as less IKEA as possible. Time to get painting. By far my favourite part of any project and definitely for this one, the one that is going to transform it the most. So I'm thrilled to be working with Benjamin Moore for this project and using their paint. This is actually the top coat that I'm using and it's in the colour Reverb Pewter. It's like a lovely greyish colour, so I hope they're lovely warm grey. But I'll show you that when I get onto the top coat. I need to prime first. Now you might not have heard of Benjamin Moore before if you're based in the UK because they are originally from the US, but now they are coming to the UK, which is so, so exciting. I originally discovered them via Studio McGee, who's one of my favorite interior designers on Instagram. And whenever I see a room that they do, often they use Benjamin Moore. They've actually got their kitchen cabinets painted in a Benjamin Moore paint, which I just love. It's like a gorgeous creamy white and they use a lot of their whites which I always struggle with. Finding the right tone of white is so difficult but Benjamin Moore honestly have so many different paints. 
they are stocked in lots of like local retailers they're actually in brewers which is where i picked up mine so you can go and like check out their colors there but you can also order samples online so they've got a website that you can order from i actually have a long list of paints that i would like to try from them and after seeing them on Instagram for quite a while, there's quite a few paints that I want to check out. But I'm starting this project with one of their primers, which I will show you. So I'm just going to give this one a quick sand. And now the one thing with good quality paint, and it's specifically Benjamin Moore paint, is that you don't have to do so many coats. The coverage is absolutely amazing, the consistency. We really learn the hard way with this, I'm gonna be honest. We used a few cheap paints when we first came into the house and started renovating. And quite quickly you learn that it isn't as cost effective as you think that it's gonna be. It takes more coats, which ends up meaning it takes more paint. So we often were going out and buying a lot more paint, which meant that it wasn't cheaper at all. And also they're usually not as well wearing, which you may have seen in our snug project. After a few years, we had to repaint. So if you take any advice from me, my advice would be invest in the paint. It's well worth it. But let's get going with the primer first. I'll show you the color of the paint, hopefully maybe by the end of today, and you can see how it goes on. So if you're doing this project, I will show you the primer that you need to put onto the IKEA furniture. So for this project on the IKEA items, because they've got this gloss on them, I'm gonna be using this primer, which is the Styx Waterborne Bonding Primer. And then we're also using other wood elements for the project, like the trim. So I've got another primer too here, which is the Fresh Start Primer. So that'll go on all of the wood items. And then the top coat here, the Aura, this is a water paste interior paint and I've got this one in the eggshell finish but I will show you these as I apply them. I'm gonna get on with my first door. I've got this on my table down here with a bit of cardboard. And as I mentioned, I'm just gonna give this one a really little um, sand before I get on with the primer. I've just opened this one but I wanted to read this to you because I think this is gonna soon become my best friend and yours. So it's for priming challenging interiors and exterior surfaces, including PVC, vinyl, plastic, glass, tile, galvanized block, glossy paints, pre-coated siding, fiberglass, galvanized metal. It's also ideal for plaster, drywall, and wood substrates in commercial and residential applications. I mean, amazing. I feel like I'll be using this all of the time. Love that. Let's get it on. <laughs> wonderfully patient whilst I wait for two of the drawers to dry so that I can move them. I am going to paint the skirting board which is already primed in the top coat because I just can't wait to see the colour. It looks so good. I think it's going to be perfect. I'm not sure if you can tell there but next to the white. It's a wee bit later. I have been painting and priming whatever I can get my hands on, but now we are making strips for the doors. So as usual, I've just mocked a quick little thing up here on the pages. Um, as you can see here, I've literally just used shapes and I've used the square shape and this is perfectly the size of the door. So we're trying to work out basically what size the trim is. And we think this is a little bit, little bit slim. We went for 60 to start with. Well, the lighting has gone really pink. It's because my laptop was blue, I think. Um, so now we're going up to 75, and then we think that'll be perfect. If I close that down, move it out of the way. 
you can see on the doors. Now, why we are doing this, yes, we could have just got the shaker style Ikea doors, but I don't want them to look Ikea. And personally, I feel like even if they're very similar, as soon as I see an Ikea door, I know it, like straight away. So ours are gonna be slightly different. The top is gonna to have a much smaller section, um, and it's gonna be like a little bit more of a traditional door. Ikea has, I think it has like four squares or two. Am I explaining this very well? I'll put a picture up here. So we're going for three in a bit of a different shape. I'm hoping that it looks nice. At this stage, we just don't really know. Scrap that. <laughs> as soon as I put down the camera, I was like, no, I think I like the 60. <laughs> um, thankfully, Ollie hadn't cut any, so um, he had actually cut two 60s already, as you can see here. And so we're going for the 60. I just think this slimmer one is so elegant. So yeah, that's the comparison. There's 60 in comparison to 75. I know it's very little, we're going for 60. <laughs> Ollie is so cute, he just taped these ones off. I just think that's the sweetest thing. Um, and we're getting a bit tired now, aren't we? But we finally decided on where we were positioning all of these and Ollie has cut them. So now we just need to pop them in and then we're gonna glue and hopefully, oh, you're impressed with that, are you? Yeah, that's a good fit. It's a good fit. Yep, so we're slotting these in and then it's obviously gonna be a process of Filling, sanding, priming, painting, getting it to look perfectly perfect. We are back this morning. And Ollie just came in here and his face dropped. And I was like, what? Seriously, tell me what's wrong. Surely there can't be anything that is that bad. We made a big doo doo last night. We have accidentally made three left hand doors and one right hand door. We didn't even check. Obviously they all have either right hand or left hand. So we should have been putting on the trim to correlate. And we didn't. We just randomly did it. We just randomly put the doors down and put the trim on where we wanted. I mean, we're kind of lucky that we only have one to change. We're but... so lucky we've only got one to... Well, I suppose we would only ever have two. Yeah, one or two. Potentially to yeah. change. Um... But it could have been changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're going to hopefully change this one. So last night, I'll show you what we did. Um, you would have probably seen a little bit of a clip. But we ended up cutting all the trim on. So we actually started with this first door, which we didn't love. We wood glued it and then we nail gunned. But our nail gun isn't the best and it leaves dents like this. So we then decided with all the, the rest of the doors that we were just going to glue them. So we did wood glue and super glue. Today we're going to have to go around and just fill them in. But this is the design that we're going for. And then our handles, it seems a little bit low right now, but they are going to be low. Um, but they'll be bought out with the skirting board. Our handles will go somewhere about here. So first thing, which we weren't expecting to do, we're just going to change this. <clears throat> and then we're going to, what, are we mind-touring them a bit? We are, we're going to run a flush trim bit on the tops because these bits are ever so slightly long. Yeah. And then we're going to test fit them on the wardrobe because they've got that bit of wood and we don't know if it's going to interfere with the edge. So we're going to see if that works. If it doesn't, we'll then use the router again and we will put a very little chamfer on the edge. On the edges. To help them open. Which we're hoping we don't have to do. Yeah. So, I mean, as our day has started, maybe we will have to be doing that, but let's see. <laughs> like nothing ever happened, hey? Yep. <laughs> We're just sanding it off. Um, Cause the glue obviously left the marks. That's good now, isn't it? Yeah. It'll be beautiful once it's painted. I 
Okay, so this is the test of the door. It hasn't been altered though, remember? Like, I haven't adjusted it. Okay. A bit tight. It's basically stuck there. Oh no! This could be the most epic IKEA fail. Oh, but it's so far out. Yeah, it's nowhere near where it needs to be. Uh, As in, oh, okay, yeah. As in, it's nowhere near. Uh, that's gonna be difficult. We need to adjust the hinges. So that needs to come. That's fine. That's way too far out. You guys see that, like here. We actually decided that it would be safer to order some more hinges, so we've done that. Those are arriving tomorrow, and I have, as you can see here, filled all of our little seams, which I'm now going to sand, because it's been about an hour or so. And then I can start priming these. Whilst I'm doing this, Ollie is up doing the side panel of the wardrobe unit, so I'll show you that um, probably when I'm waiting for this to dry. This guy is forever buying new things. I don't know where you find them. Do you find them off of other DIY channels or? Peter Millard, yeah. Peter Millard, there you go. Um, <laughs> he's got this, like. Wait, I'll say it, because okay. everyone, half people will ask. It's 3M9088P, double-sided tape. Industrial double-sided sticky tape. So we're giving that a go for the first time. And I'll just show you quickly here. So we've got this end panel that we want to do the same as the doors, but obviously we have um, lined all of the wardrobes with these, which are 44 mil deep, which makes it far too deep here to coincide with the doors. So we need to bring it up to the same level so that all of the areas just have the six mil trim. So while he's made this, well, <laughs> What would you call this? Packer? Piece of wood? Yeah, it's a... It's a yeah. Packer piece of wood. Piece of, well, no, no, that's, that's going to be the front. We're going to stick the trim on the front of this. So this will be the panel. That you see? Yeah, and yeah. there's just some packers on the so back. So technically, like, to overly simplify it, that's our door on the end. Yes. And then we'll put, just like we've done with the doors, we'll put the 6 mil trim on it. So now Ollie's going in with some glue, then we're going to stick it on, and then we can do the trim. So it's basically double-sided tape. Yeah, but super, super sticky. So on that really annoying wrapping paper that doesn't stick down, <laughs> can I use this? You can, but it won't. But it won't pull apart. It will just rip. Take the paper with it. Oh, okay. Next up, I need to sort out the trim along the top of the wardrobes there. We're gonna be using the same wood that we put in the middle to keep it all consistent, but we are gonna chop that top bit off and then run one piece all the way along the top so it really ties everything in. So first job, I need to get that cut and then get one of those pieces up there. We are nearing the end of today, and this process just seems like a process of packers, doesn't it? Yeah, like, everything just needs to be packed out to the same depth. <laughs> Literally. Um, so, as you may see there, we are packing out this area. So, the skirting board will sit here. And if I bring you here, you can kind of see. So, we've got this depth that we need to pack because the skirting board can't go back any further than that, obviously. So we're gonna pack it out. We'll have to fill and neaten it afterwards so you don't really see it. But this will just mean when you open the wardrobe, you don't, you don't see a hole going the whole way down. Um, it'll just look like a bit of an extended wardrobe bottom. There's layer number two. Here's what it looks like with the skirting board. Yeah, it's just checking it's the right height and it looks okay. Yeah. And then we've got another layer going on. <laughs> another layer. 
So we've done three packages. This is our third and final one. Obviously, depending on what wood you trim this out on and how thick you do your doors, this will change. Um, but this is the depth that we needed. And then, skirting board. Oh, no. Like that. It looks a bit ugly right now, but once you put some wood filler over Fill, that. Fill, paint, it'll sand. look beautiful. It's all perfectly the same size. The carcasses are painted while he's speaking to that <laughs> because the first door is going on and we're pretty excited but I'm a little bit nervous too. So these are new hinges so they're not the IKEA hinges so that it works with this design. I will link the hinges that we used below. Um, we got them from Iron Mongery Direct. I don't it's know. so easy to put on. Oh really I'm so nervous. I don't know why, but like this this whole system doesn't work unless this works. So looks great painted though. You can see our little sockets in there. We've still got some trim to put on the top and our skeleton at the bottom. That's very slow. Very soft clothing. Very, very soft. slow. Oh my gosh, it looks so good though! Really good. Doesn't hit the frame. I'm actually speechless. I know. Like, I, actually, I don't even know what to say. I kind of really want to see a door handle on it, but do you think it's too late to be messing around with door handles? Oh, I'm so tempted. Do you want it literally like dead centre in the middle of there? Yeah, I think so. If you're wanting to do this job and you're wanting to use these different hinges um, and also use the IKEA without like drilling new holes here so you want to use their screws you're gonna have to drill these out it was actually really easy it, it, what did you use so you need a six millimeter bit which is suitable for metal did you just say bits bit 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 six millimeter bit what's a bit drill bit that's what they're called. <laughs> drill bit. Okay, drill bit. <laughs> Do you need six minutes? Tell you what, I, I might I might show you. Do you want me to show you later? Or show you now? I'll mm. go I'll go grab it in a second when I come up and I'll okay. show you. So to make all of these bits fit with the IKEA screws, we took each one and we just clamped it onto a block and then drilled through the holes with a six millimeter HSS bit, which is suitable for metal. So that just went through oh, that one and that one. It then left like a really sharp protrusion on the back side. So then we just used a um, countersinking bit to just go through that and make it flat again. And then the same thing with the hinges. I notched out a bit of wood and popped that in there so it was all flat and supported and just did the same thing. We have just got back from shopping, picking up some more little strips of wood because when we put these doors on and made the frames, we thought we were going to be using the IKEA hinges and then we figured out that we couldn't because they would catch on there. So we had to change over to these fancy blunt ones, but they have brought the doors out this way further than we thought. So when we made this frame, we weren't accounting for this gap here. 
So what we've done is we've gone and gotten some more strips of wood, which kind of look like this, but not really. So they're gonna fit on there and they're gonna bring it out just enough that this is gonna be flush or we can set the doors behind it a little bit more, which is the look we always wanted to go for, but we didn't quite figure out how to build it ahead of time. We did read a bunch of blogs and watch videos, but no one seems to have detailed how you do this in enough detail. So if you're curious, don't worry about what you're making this bit out of, just wait until you get the doors on and then pack it out with the appropriately sized piece of wood, which is what I'm gonna do now. All of those strips are now up on the wardrobe, so we've got it all built out to the correct depth. And I've also put in some little packers in there so that the skirting board can sit on flush. And the next thing to do is just fix that little bit of skirting board over there. It's tipping it down with rain, which you may be able to hear, but they are done. We're gonna show you what they look like now and also take you through our mistakes and tips that you can learn from. It actually was generally a pretty easy process. Yeah, just one or two things that we made a mistake on, which we probably want to know. No, I mean, we had to go through the process to figure it out, but you guys don't need to. You can learn from us. So yeah, let's show you what it looks like. So here it is, kind of in its full glory on the side. We did just do a few jobs um, this morning. So the door handles went on and we also put what I'm gonna call kind of like door buffers. We put those on so that the doors would be straight else they were kind of going at a little bit of an angle. But probably the main thing that we learned from is these hinges. So the hinges that come with the IKEA packs are made to just open normally, whereas we built these bits out loads, so they were just hitting that all the time. So these are the Blum Thick Door 25 millimeter hinges. Yeah, I'll link them below. They're just generally really nice hinges anyway. If you look at the soft clothes, so beautiful. I'd say if we're gonna make another IKEA wardrobe, if we were to do that, get the Blum hinges instead of the Ikea ones. Yeah, they probably they are a little bit more expensive, but they do, just, there's just something about it that makes it that little bit more luxurious. Also really nice with them, they have really good adjustability. The Ikea ones are always a bit of a pain, but these screws make it so simple to get everything lined up and straight. So just to simplify that, if you like pull this screw out, it'll like move it back or forward. And that's literally how easy it is to adjust. Um, and you can just keep doing it by a few mil to get them absolutely perfect. Here's a little look at the inside. So we've got our sockets there. Unfortunately, because of all of the shortages at Ikea, we are missing the shelves inside, but we're gonna be going for the dark brown wood ones so that it matches in with our flooring. And then the other thing that we made just a little mistake on was, um, would you, is it called a face plate? It's a face frame. So face because, frame. so because we changed the hinges, we made our original face frame, which is behind here, the right depth for the Ikea hinges. Which unfortunately meant that this depth, you can kind of see it here. This is our original one. And then we had to put on a little bit more just to make it perfect and to fit but if you were going to do this we'd say don't worry put that face frame on at the end and yeah. worry about the depth when you've finished 
the carcasses and doors. Yeah, get the carcasses built, decide how big a gap you want between the carcasses. How and wide? get that, this is 44 millimetres. Yeah. Um, some people do use like CLS stud timber and things, that's like 38 millimetres, so you could use that as well. Get that sorted, get your doors done and decide how big a shaker frame or whatever style door you're doing. Do that, get the hinges on, then right at the end, put your face frame on and then you can make it to the perfect depth. Yeah, and the one, one little niggly thing that I would change and potentially you guys can help us out with is the cornice. It's too big, it's a little bit overpowering, but this is genuinely the only one that I could find that I didn't have to pay £500 delivery. So if anybody knows um, of anywhere I can get some really nice cornice that isn't just like too much, I just know. Wood. Yeah, ideally wood, yeah, because this one isn't wood. Um, it's just a very cheap, practical one from B&Q, which is fine, fine for now, but potentially in the future we will change. Um, and we also went for skirting board from B&Q, which we're pretty, pretty chuffed with actually. And our skirting board on the actual walls, I will link below, matches in with our original. Um, Same stuff we used on all of the doorways and the windows. Yeah. And the insides look like this. So we also painted the inside to make them look a little bit more bespoke too. So this is in the Benjamin Moore Reverb Pewter. I love the color on camera. It's coming up a little bit more gray than it actually is in real life. And just the quality was amazing. To be honest, I could have just done one coat if I wanted to, but I did go ahead and do two coats. Um, but I just think looks so gorgeous and the paint really does transform it i will link um, the benjamin moore website below definitely go and check them out and also the rug yes it's far too small i picked this one up from home sense it's absolutely gorgeous i wish i had a space for it it's got these like lovely patterns to it um but yeah i, I thought it was going to be a better size for the space and annoying as well because it perfectly matches the tones of this wardrobe but hopefully I might be able to find something that's a little bit wider because we've got quite a lot of space this side and that side too. Thanks for watching, good luck if you're gonna have a go yourself. You did an amazing job. This is pretty much Ollie. My vision, Ollie's work. Execution. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it, it turned out well. Yeah it did turn out really well. We are so excited to basically fill it now. Um, I'll show you that in another video but I will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.